I was watching BGS Igmore and he was doing a video talking about everyone at the McDonald's quit. The whole staff quit. So I'm assuming this was the, um, I forget what it's called, the crew, the um, managers, everyone just quit and walked out. And there is a number of videos on YouTube. There's a, about people quitting their jobs and usually the comment sections are overwhelmingly, you go boy, you go girl, you handle your business. And there is like a workers revolt where people are like, I am quitting my job. Now, there is a reason that people are doing this and it's because they're being protected and taken care of. Do you think if these people were going to be homeless that they would quit their job? I don't think so. We live in a society where we're that close to universal basic income. Do you know if you're a single person and you're not working, you can get food stamps? You don't have to have family to get food stamps. You just have to go in and it's like, hey, I have a need. You can get food stamps. You can get like 200 bucks a month food stamps. Uh, do you know that you can uh, shack up with your friends instead of paying rent on a one or two bedroom apartment by yourself? You could pay 200 bucks per month. I'm going somewhere with this. Essentially, besides being a responsible adult, you can quit your job and still be able to live. Still be able to get by. Still be able to eat. And we're, we're in a very strange place with people and values. Now, I'm going to go off into another little tangent here. I have a rental car business and I had someone bring me back a car that had significant, not significant damage, that's an overstatement, it had minor damage. Like the mirror, which was plastic, has a hole in it. There's a scrape on the front bumper and there's a dent in the side and this guy had the car six weeks going somewhere stay with me people don't have the mores and responsibility ethic that they used to I have been driving 30 some years close to 40 years I've been in one accident and it was a rainy day and I misgaged Breaking and I braked on this hill and I slid into someone else. I rear into someone. It wasn't a lot of damage. That's my only accident. So I've managed to have multiple cars and not wreck them, not damage them, not lose the key. I'm going somewhere. Essentially, people today have no sense of responsibility. This, like, I would never just quit my job without a two week notice. I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm moving on. Here's my two weeks notice. And I would show up every day. That is gone. And this is why this is so dangerous. Everyone is self indulgent. And from a collective society, this isn't good. It used to be like, give you an example. Let's say you start a trucking company and you hire your family. You hire your brother, your sister, your uncle, your cousins. They're going to be way more loyal to you because you are family than if you were just to hire some people off the streets. And I have noticed 
uh, I have a friend who has a trucking company. And it's funny because, you know, we haven't talked in years. I had to reach out to him. And uh, I called him up and I asked him, I was like, hey, man, how's it going? He said, it's going great. I was like, you know, I talk to other truck company, trucking company owners, and they have the worst time with drivers. He said, we don't have that problem. He said, everyone that works here is family, literally family. They are husbands, wives, cousins, sisters, brothers, everyone. He's got a company with 25 trucks, and everyone in those trucks is a family member, and they don't shift, they don't jockey, they don't go from opportunity to opportunity. Like, over here, they're paying me two bucks in a mile, where I'm currently getting $1.75, so I'm going to go over here for this other 25 cents per mile. They're not doing that. And what I'm saying is people have no commitment to anything, nothing. I was watching this video. This girl was an airline pop, six figures. She was driving a commercial jet. She was flying a commercial jet, six figure job. She quit because she had to work too much. She quit because she had to work too much. She quit because she had to work too much. If you are a airline pilot, a stewardess, or you work in the airport, you automatically know that you're going to be working weekends, you're going to be working hot holidays, and you're going to be working weird shifts. That just comes with the job. But we now have a bunch of people who want to have a job that's like tech. And what do I mean by that? I mean, they want to be able to schedule their hours, take time off when they want to, essentially do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it with the blessings of their employer. And most companies do not run like a tech company. You cannot, like, go go back to my uh, resale business. There was no way I could have ran that like a tech company. It's like, hey, it's Monday. I want to take Monday off. We got 15 units to unload. You can't be taking the day off, boy. And, you know, I, I'm just looking at it. And for the innovative, for the hardworking, for the hustlers, we're about to enter a boom cycle. I'm serious. We're about to enter a cycle of unprecedented growth for the people who want to hustle, for the people who are willing to work, for the people who are willing to show up. Because we have another sector, a segment of society. We have a segment of society that is checking out. Like all of these people who just quit their job. Now, I'm not speaking from a lofty position of where I've never had a crappy job. I've had plenty of crappy jobs. You all know one of the worst jobs I ever had? I was at the labor pool and I got sent out to this landfill. You know what our job was? To pick out things out the landfill that didn't belong. So we're picking out diapers. We're picking out plastic. We're in there digging in. We have gloves and rubber boots and stuff. It was hot. It was stinky. That was a crappy job. Okay? Now, does, like, working in the McDonald's, is it like that where you're pulling poo and plastic and it's like 95 degrees outside the sun is overhead is is it is it like that hard working in mcdonald's you're working in air conditioning you're not really doing that hard of a work essentially many americans have become exceptionally fragile when when i gotta work too many i gotta work an hour overtime when i got when Oh man, I gotta come to work on Monday and I don't feel good. When my little tummy hurts. When, when, when. We have a nation of very fragile people. Really 
fragile people. Very fragile. Because I, you know, when I was working in a labor pool, there was uh, there was coveted jobs. You know what a coveted job was? If it was clean, you were inside and you had air conditioning. That was a good labor ready labor pool job. You were like, man, I, I came up. I remember one time, one of my gigs was to work the Christmas party for the Arthur Anderson um, Christmas party. And uh, it was black and white. We had to wear black pants, white shirt. My job was to go around and get the plates. When people were finished with their plates, walk around, pull out their plates. That's all I had to do. 12 bucks an hour. And it was one of the best gigs I ever worked with. There was this bartender who was super sexy, hooked up with her. There was like, it, it was a nice event. It wasn't like back breaking hard work. It, it was actually kind of fun. Now, what we have right now is a nation of people who want to be in the owner position. Owner comes in when he wants to. Owner leaves when he wants to. Owner does what he wants to. However, let's look at it because I'm going to do a video talking about you know, you know like Right now, I'm in the car rental business, and I've been documenting it here on YouTube, and many of you have expressed, I've been doing this two months, two months, which isn't a long time, and many have expressed, when you're going to cut bait, when you're going to get out of the business, when you're going to cut your losses. This is fragile America speaking. So I started the business and there was some unexpected um, things that happened and um, people expect for me to quit because I'm having, you know, people damage cars, someone stole a car, uh, people are late with rent. And this, this is something that every car rental company deals with except that no one is talking about it except me on YouTube. And many people are like, this is too hard. Essentially, um, I feel that the roughest part of this business has passed. You know, it was, uh, I learned a lot in two months. And one of the biggest issues I had, like uh, one day I woke up and I had 18 cars rented out and I had seven cars late so I go through and I'm like good morning how are you doing are you going to bring it back or are you going to extend it boom three of those people like oh man I forgot let me take care of that right now and they paid and I went from seven cars late to four cars late and then one guy I sent him a demand letter and he brought the car back then we went down to three cars late so and then essentially over two periods, I went from seven cars late to zero cars late because I'm learning how to manage this business, you know, and th this is one of the things there, there's a methodology. There is like right now, I forget how many teams are in the NBA, but you got guys who can get in that corner and shoot the ball and arc it over the backboard and have it hit the, hit the basket and do nothing but net. And the, there are people with exceptional skill sets. So, you know, right now, the business looks pretty trashy. Looks pretty trashy, right? But as I learn how to run this business, how to manage this business, it's going to get better. But once again, I am not a member of Fragile America. When I started this business, I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be a challenge. I knew there was going to be trials and tribulations because I'm dealing with the public. And anyone who's been in a service uh, business capacity of dealing with the public knows that dealing with the public is hard. And I knew it. But this month, uh, I... 
expecting to do 20 something thousand this month. And then next month I expect to do 30 something thousand. So it is just a method of management in dealing with people. And like all these folks who quit their job, I'm like, was it the manager? Uh, you know, cause, or, or was it one of those McDonald's where they didn't have any managers and it just had the crew? I don't know, I don't know. But essentially you've got people who are quitting their jobs and running out and I'm, I'm here to tell you what's about to happen. McDonald's is already doing this. You think McDonald's is stupid. McDonald's already knows that getting competent, decent people to work for them is a challenge. And this is why there's a McDonald's here in Sandy Springs and they just remodeled it. And what they did is the counter used to be facing this way and they switched it over and there's no one at the counter. You go in, there's two kiosks. You go in and punch your order, then someone brings your food. In the future, this is already in the development map. Your food is just gonna, you're not gonna have anyone that's gonna be at the counter. There's not gonna be anyone at the counter. They're just gonna have cooks. Just gonna have cooks that are going to cook the food and bring it out to you. That's what's gonna happen. You're just gonna have cooks. And a lot of people who are hating these crappy jobs, don't worry, they're gonna disappear. These jobs that so many people supposedly hate are about to disappear. And it's gonna be interesting because right now, with the taste of freedom that so many people got because of COVID, we're seeing the real nature of current America. This is not the America that I grew up in. There's nothing like it. Uh, people were honorable, people were responsible, and people actually looked out for their fellow man. That's gone, but Mark my words, these jobs that people hate, that they are so eager to quit from, they don't wanna do, they're gonna disappear. They're gonna disappear. We're not gonna have these jobs. And then it's going to be really, really interesting how people respond because <clears throat> COVID was a once in a lifetime event. And what it did is it gave the unwashed masses that taste of freedom because of stimulus money and unemployment benefits, people were able to live and have income coming in. And this is the first time this has happened since they were children and it's intoxicating. A lot of these people are now what I call dreaming of the life that they could have. They're dreaming of the life that they can live, but it's kind of like dividend investing. Great parallel. Right now, there's a ton of videos on YouTube how much money do you need to live off of dividends? What do you, you know, and they do really, really well because people are in love with the concept of dividend investing and in passive income. But the reality, how many people that start doing dividend investing actually reach their goals? Only a small percentage because I don't care how many videos on dividend investing on YouTube, how much you need to live off YouTube, how to live off dividends faster, the math doesn't change. If you don't have the income to buy seven figures worth of dividend investing stock, you're not going to make enough dividend money to live on. 
The math doesn't change. I don't care how many videos these YouTubers put up, how many people explain it. The fact is that if you don't have the money to put two to ten thousand dollars a month in dividend stock, you're looking at not reaching your goal. You're 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 not going to reach your goal. But people are in love with the ideal. And that's the thing. Right now, people are in love with work, having this of the dream job. Let's call it the dream job. <clears throat> what is the dream job? The dream job is one that you don't have to work that hard. People are fragile. They don't want to work hard. You get as much time off as you need. If like Monday morning, you don't want to go in, you can call like, hey, I'm not coming in and take the day off of mental health day, whatever you want to call it. They're looking for things that are not realistic. They're not realistic. Every company cannot operate like a tech company. And also, from what I've read, a lot of tech companies that have all these perks and benefits, a lot of employees in these tech companies they can't, they working too much to take them. So here's the thing. People want that dream job. They want the ability to work when they want to work. They want the ability to call their shots. They want the ability to work at home. But here's the thing. And this is why I did the video talking about have you qualified your yourself for success and here's the thing most people have not qualified themselves for the very dream job that they want once again stem a lot of a lot of jobs in stem a lot of perks a lot of money people are not qualified for these stem jobs and they they want what they want kind of like I was watching this girl did um, this video talking about dividend investing <clears throat> and it's got like 92,000 views and <clears throat> so many <clears throat> people are looking at the big picture. If you have X amount of stock and th this is what's funny, I was looking through the comments and one person said you needed $4 million worth of dividend stocks to get $120,000 a year off a dividend stock. Like those little pesky little details. Because essentially, you know, depending upon what kind of dividend stock you pay, what kind of, you know, job that you go for, the reality is math doesn't change reality doesn't change the reality of you getting this perfect dream job that pays you how you want to be paid gives you the time off where you don't have to work that hard is a fantasy it is a fantasy and many people just like the fantasy of dividend investing most people will not reach their goals with dividend investing. Most people will not reach their their job goals. They're not gonna reach their job goals because here's one of the reasons. The first reason is they're not intentional. There's no intentionality in what they're doing. They're randomly going from job to job with no structure, no pattern, no strategy. That's the first thing. The second thing, the average person has a problem with discipline. To be a dividend stock, you know, you got to have discipline for decades. Discipline to consistently put this money into dividend stock. Most people don't have that. So there's no strategy. There's no discipline. And also what I like to call the big reality check. All right. These folks who quit their job at McDonald's. Who's going to be hurt? McDonald's will eventually get more employees. But you, you don't have no money. Because you don't have no job. 
who's really, really hurting this? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're quitting McDonald's. We're out of this bitch, man. Yeah, we're quitting. What are you going to do? Because here's the simple truth. Why were you working at McDonald's in the first place? Because that's all you were qualified to do. It wasn't like you were a doctor and just chose to work at McDonald's. That's all that you were qualified to do. And until those qualifications change, your job prospects will not change. So, yeah, you quit your job at McDonald's. Okay, now you can go work at Dairy Queen. Now you can go work at Arby's. Now you can go work at Wendy's. Now you can go work at Burger King. So you can just trade one low-skill, low-wage job for another low-skill, low-wage job. See, the, the problem isn't the job. The problem is the people. People don't want to qualify themselves. People don't want to um, build. People don't want to have a strategy. People don't want to deploy discipline. And once again, you know, you can quit your job. But all until your qualifications change, until you become a more qualified person, it's going to be the same. It's just going to be the same old stuff. It's going to be the reality. It's going to be, and th this is why when I watch these videos, I quit when I learn this about money. I quit. You know, people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. But the reality is when you are in this world and you don't have a plan, you don't have a strategy, you don't have qualifications, this world's going to be very cruel and unkind to you. This is the reality. But once again, you will continue to see people quit their jobs because they don't want to work. I've gotten a lot of flack because I'm saying these people are lazy. And based upon the generation that I grew up in, based upon the work ethic that I exhibit, these people are lazy. And laziness is going to catch up with these people. Because, you know, like I said, I get a lot of stuff. It's like, you need to get off this tactic where people are lazy. Uh, there are some people who are working their butts off. I salute those people. Kudos to those people. But there's another segment that they're just lazy. They're just lazy. They don't want to work. Right now, you have governors of states ending the $300 additional money on top of unemployment because they have seen that this is keep keeping people from working. They have seen this. They have seen this. This is keeping people from working. They're, this this is keeping people from going to work because, once again, a large segment of America is lazy. That's it. And these McDonald workers who were not like doing backbreaking work. They were not doing mind-numbing work. They, they, it's like, I've never worked in the McDonald's. But like I said earlier, I've worked in some really crappy jobs. Some very crappy jobs. And I learned from those crappy jobs. And I have benefited from some of those crappy jobs. But essentially... We're in a state of America where people are seduced by fantasies. And as long as people continue to be seduced by these fantasies, people will continue to drop these fantasies. And this is going to go on. So... One of the things that people have to understand is life is not fair. Life is real. And go ahead and have these fantasies of quitting your
your job, but at the end of the day, unless you can quit that job and move to a better paying job, quitting your job may not be the best thing for you. So that's all I got for you guys. I got some additional training coming up next week. I'll be dropping it and we'll talk about that later. So see you guys in the next video.